Hi there! My name is Julia and I'm going to tell you about my master thesis, the production measurements in proton-proton and lead-lead collisions at the LHC. For you to understand what I'm doing and the motivation behind it, let's start with the standard model. This is the most accurate theory built until today that includes all the known particles and describes their interactions. It includes matter particles, quarks and leptons that compose the universe all around us, and bosons that mediate three fundamental forces. Let's focus on the strong force mediated by the gluon. This is the realm of quantum chromodynamics, one of the components of the standard model. The name, chromodynamics, indicates that we are dealing with color, but these are not your typical red, green and blue. It's easier to understand what color represents in particle physics by analogy with the electrical charge. Just like electrons carry this charge, quarks and gluons carry the color charge, a property that defines their interactions. The strong force will act upon such particles. Now an important concept comes into play. Confinement. At normal energies, experimenters never observe quarks and gluons by themselves. They exist in bound states that we call hadrons. Certainly you have heard about protons and neutrons. These are two examples of hadrons. When trying to separate the bound quark and quark state, for instance, the energy in the field between them becomes so great that it is energetically more efficient to create another bound state. But is it always like this? QCD predictions tell us not so fast. QCD predicts that at very high energy densities, at very high temperatures, the bound states basically melt, originating a small droplet of liquid that we call quark gluon plasma. QGP can be thought of as a very hot soup of quarks and gluons, no longer confined, and it is predicted to have existed microseconds after the Big Bang. Understanding this medium is key to understanding the evolution of the universe, right after the Big Bang. Now you might be thinking, how can one study a medium that existed some billion years ago? Well, here come colliders like the LHC to save the day. At the LHC, particles are shot together at near the speed of light, with very high energies. When the particles being collided are heavy ions, like lead, one can reach very high energy densities and there is the formation of QGP. Here we have two nuclei formed by protons and neutrons colliding in a much messier way than if we were just colliding protons. Yes, it's true, we don't just open interdimensional portals at the LHC. But really guys, that is not a thing. Bottom quarks, because of their high mass, have to be produced in early high momentum scatterings. They have a surprisingly long lifetime, so they will live through the complete evolution of the medium. After expansion and cooling of the medium, those quarks will adronize, forming what we call B mesons. These are composed by an anti bottom quark and a different quark that determines if we have a B, a B0, or a B sub S. But why am I focusing so much on these B particles? Well, the QGP is very short-lived, and we cannot access it directly. Instead, we use these B mesons as probes of our medium, trying to understand its properties by the way it affects production measurements. Recapping, B quarks are created very early in the collision, interact with the QGP, lose energy, and then combine with different quarks, forming B mesons. Our goal is to measure how many of them are produced. To make sure that we are just measuring the effects of QGP, we also measure productions in proton-proton collisions, where the medium is just plain old vacuum. Then we compute ratios between lead-lead and proton-proton production, scaled by the expected number of binary collisions in this lead-lead case. These are called nuclear modification factors. One important factor is missing. How is the data being collected? Here we use data from the compact muon solenoid, one of the detectors at the LHC. It is composed by different layers that involve the beam line sequentially, including a very powerful solenoid and muon chambers at the end that allow very good muon identification. From the particles the beam mesons decay to, we can identify them. The decay channels used in this analysis contain two opposite charged muons, taking advantage of the great muon identification of CMS. After a long analysis, we are able to calculate production yields in proton-proton and lead-lead collisions and the scaled ratios that include information about the properties of QGP. Analyses like this one are pieces of a much larger puzzle of the history of the universe, starting from the Big Bang.